My name is Mark Love, and this is the Lake County police car that uh, John Dillinger escaped from the Crown Point Jail on March 3rd, 1934. I spent a little over 10 years of my time uh, trying to track down this car. The original cost of that exact car was $605. They've estimated at $3 million. That's exactly what it's insured for. <laughs> <laughs> After a decade of searching and years of restoration, John Dillinger's famous 1933 Ford getaway car looks like it did almost 90 years ago. The car runs just as good today as it did back in the, back in the day when Dillinger took it. It'll do 80 flat. This steering wheel has never been restored. Um, this is actually the steering wheel that John Dillinger held while he was driving. It drew big interest during its debut with the Auburn Corps Duesenberg Museum in a town familiar with the antics of the Hoosier hoodlum. Dillinger did come into Auburn with his gang, stole Thompson's submachine gun, went to the, the courthouse and the police department, took bulletproof vests, ammo and everything. So that's part of Auburn's history and it coincides with that time as well. Mark Love is a leading expert in the gangster's life, contributing to Hollywood blockbusters like Public Enemies and holding rare artifacts in his private collection. My dad had been doing this since the you know, early 40s. Just one thing led to another and pretty soon he became the, you know, the largest collector in the country. Dillinger is known for his string of bank robberies, including some that happened in 21 country. During the Great Depression, they cemented his celebrity status as the anti-hero. People weren't, you know, living at a very good standard back in the, you know, early 30s. Here you got this guy that, uh, you know, would go into a bank and rob it. It was a little take back. You know, it, it, you know, even though they weren't doing it and they weren't, you know, receiving any money from it, I guess they just felt good about it somehow inside that, you know, the, that the banks, the, the people that actually took their homes and things that they own, that they worked very hard for. Locked up in the Crown Point Jail, legend has it that Dillinger crafted a fake gun to leverage control of the guards, steal their weapons, and escape with Sheriff Lillian Holly's V8 Ford, this very car. Lillian Holly was so disturbed over this, she didn't want the car back. She said that if I ever see John Dillinger again, I will shoot him in the head with my own gun. But it would be the fugitive's own mistake that would lead to his demise, crossing state lines, triggering the Dyer Act, and allowing the newly formed FBI to join the manhunt. This is, a, this is just a, a rendition of the when Dillinger got uh, shot down at the Biograph Theater. He was killed after they tracked him down in Chicago. The Ford was later sold at a police auction, disappearing, until that is, the son of the man who bought it registered it in Maine. History is a very important thing. You know, I just think it'd be a great thing for, you know, people to understand, you know, the way life once was. How much impact one person and one group of people had on the Midwest in just a very short amount of time. And just having these artifacts around helped bring that connection of that story to a person, be able to see the actual things rather than read it in a book.